Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is Indie Fanatics, your home for indie car content with weekly podcasts and feature videos. Welcome back to the channel and to another feature video. Last time out was part one of our safety in IndyCar series, so if you haven't already, check that one out. Don't forget, if there is a driver team or topic you'd like us to look at in the future, comment below. But today, it's time for part two of our safety in IndyCar series. Last time out, we left you in the early 80s after the tragic accident of Gordon Smiley. And in today's episode, we take you through how safety and the safety team continue to develop through the 80s and 90s. With improved medical care and the first studies into crashes, this is Safety Through Science. Warning ahead of viewing that there may be some images and videos of crashes that may disturb viewers, but were included to help show the tragic past of the sport. After the smiley crash, it led to the procedure being in place that nobody dies at the racetrack. That's not as in physically has passed away, but in that the driver will be transported to a nearby hospital and the family will have a quiet place to be informed of what has happened with respect they deserve at such a time. And this has become the procedure around the world in motorsport. And luckily in this day and age, it's a procedure that isn't used very often. 1982 also saw Dr. Henry Bock take over from Dr. Tom Hanna as Indianapolis Motor Speedway Medical Director. Known as Hank to the racing community, he first was introduced to the Speedway by Dr. Steve Olvey in 1976, where he would help him volunteer at the hospital. And he would go on to become one of the most prominent figures in improving medical and safety care in IndyCar, serving as the director until 2006. In 2004, he was awarded the Herb Porter Award for his contributions to the Safer Barrier, used on ovals in the US, which is the greatest breakthrough in racing safety in oval racing history. He sadly passed away in 2018 at the age of 81, but his legacy on improving safety in IndyCar will forever be cemented in the sport. But the next part of the documentary introduces another key figure who has had and still has a lasting impact on the improved safety and welfare of drivers within the sport. His name? Dr. Terry Tremel. He recalls his first experience at Indianapolis as a volunteer as a medical student. He had a horrendous experience attending to the crowds that he never wanted to do it again. That was until he got his first job at Methodist Hospital where he would have to be on call for the 1981 Indianapolis Annapolis 500. That race saw another horrific accident to Danny Ongaias. The image of him flopped over the cockpit with his legs exposed as the front of the car had been ripped off in the accident, most likely left people fearing the worst. Well, he was taken to Dr. Tremel at Methodist Hospital. At the time, the usual practice would be to amputate the legs due to the severity of the trauma on them, but he was determined that his first 500s on call, he would not amputate a driver's legs. So he put into place reconstructive surgery that enabled Danny to keep his legs and who was able to eventually return to racing with the only long-standing damage, a permanent limp. Pretty much a medical miracle for the time. It would be this incident that saw Dr. Olvey and Dr. Tremel, who were working together at the Methodist Hospital during the week, begin to form a long-standing partnership that would influence safety improvements for years to come. In their discussions, it would lead them to conduct the first ever medical study into major injuries in motorsports, collecting data from crash logs and interviews with drivers and teams to help form a better understanding of what causes major injuries. Interestingly, they found that 52% of drivers had been injured during accidents, 70% of those injuries sustained were to the foot and ankle, 10% were head injuries, and only 1% were cardiovascular and organ related. So from this understanding, they now knew what the main injuries were that they were going to have to focus on helping prevent to make the sport safer foot and ankle injuries. One of the most serious after this study was Rick Mears' crash at Sonair Speedway in Canada. While trying to overtake his back wheel clipped the front of the car he was passing, which sent him into a spin before making front-on contact with the barrier. It ripped off the front of the car, leaving Rick's feet in a severely damaged state and tangled up in the wiring of the car that the safety team had to free him from. He was initially taken to St. Hyacinth Hospital before it became clear that they could not handle the severity of the injuries and Rick was transported 
transported to Montreal, which had a level one trauma center. This accident also led Steve Olvey relying less on promoters recommendation of the best medical facility as they often would pick the closest. But he realized that a hospital with a level one trauma facility was required as a prerequisite for future incidents. Rick Mears' initial diagnosis at Montreal was that both feet would have to be amputated. Olvey wasn't accepting of this diagnosis and called Dr. Tremel in Indianapolis to get him flown out to Rick in Montreal. He assessed the feet were reconstructable, so Mears was flown back to Indianapolis where he underwent significant surgery on both of his feet. But again, just like three years before, Terry's incredible work had saved a driver from amputation. Rick would go on to win a further two Indy 500s in 1988 and 1991 to become one of only three men to achieve the feat of four Indy 500 wins. His accident and the magnificent work that Tremel had done on Mears and on Gaius, coupled with the 70% foot and ankle injury sustained by drivers, led to Terry being hired as a full-time orthopedic specialist to travel round with Carr with the safety team. Foot and ankle injuries continued to be a problem through the 80s into the early 90s. A changing point was the 1992 Indianapolis 500. A cold day and tyre struggling for grip meant difficult driving conditions, which resulted in 13 crashes and 9 drivers in the medical room at the same time, including Mario Andretti. But while Mario Andretti was about to head into surgery, he found out that his son, Jeff Andretti, had the most serious accident of all on the day. Severely damaged feet and an accident that although he would return to racing would limit his competitiveness for the rest of his career between 93 and 94. After that race and many drivers expressing their concern, including Mario Andretti, extensive research went into understanding the crashes and Dr. Tremel was at the forefront of this and the results was that all cars had the noses lengthened so that drivers' feet would no longer be crushed on the impact. From 1992 to 1999, with improvement in technology, Dr. Tremel and Steve Olvey were caught helping them making strides forward in being able to develop the safety features in IndyCar. Two of these features were a black box recorder and computer program simulator. With the black box, every crash and its data was being recorded and the forces for every injury inducing crash can now be studied and better understood and safety features created and implemented. With the computer simulator program, it meant that they could accurately recreate the crashes and use the data they collected to have a better idea of whether their new safety feature they were implementing would be successful. Rather than having to wait a few weeks to see how it performed out on track, essentially technology allowed the whole process to become more efficient and safety features to help protect the drivers were implemented quicker. From the data collected, they could still see that head injuries were the most dangerous and life-threatening, so Dr. Olvey took a greater interest in concussion. Now in part one, we had our answer recalling his concussion he suffered before that year's Indy 500. Well, in this section, we had Parnelli Jones, Bobby Unser and Rick Mears all recall concussions they suffered during their time racing. Bobby even says that if you could stand up straight and walk out of the hospital, you were fine. And Steve supports this with saying as medical professionals, if the driver was conscious, they believe them to be okay. With the research and understanding of how concussion is caused and the effects that it can cause on the body, they would start treating the injury more seriously. In fact, they were the first sports organisation to adopt the computer test impact that was used to assess drivers concussions and whether they were fit to drive or not. The documentary then heads back in time to 1984 to detail another serious head injury of which was sustained by Chip Ganassi at the Michigan 500 and the head injury sustained by Roberto Guerrero in a tyre test. Both men sustained head injuries that in day-to-day -day life if they'd been sustained in a road or highway accident would have resulted in long-term brain damage but both men made full recoveries. Chip going on to be one of the most successful team owners in the sport to this day and Roberto racing again in the kart series finishing second on his return. Dr. Olvey went back and looked at the significant head injury sustained in the sport that was survived and found that all the drivers had made full recoveries. The factor that had led to drivers receiving no long-term effects to their head injuries? The rapid response of the safety team being at the scene of the crash so quickly that the care they could give to the drivers ensured there would be no oxygen deprivation to the brain that would have led to long-term damage. 
There were already many improvements the safety team had made to the sport that Cart would be grateful for, but this was a huge area that they made a significant impact to help drivers' well-being. By the mid-90s, Steve recalls that the safety team had felt like they had made great strides in improving safety and fatalities were pretty rare compared to the common occurrence to when he had started in the sport. When you feel like you've fixed everything, the sport will always find another way to catch you off guard. In 1999, sadly there was two fatalities, Gonzalo Rodriguez and Greg Moore. Gonzalo was a young, talented rookie that had impressed Roger Penske enough to give him a shot. But in practice for his second race, he lost control of his car, went into the tyre barrier and flipped right over. The force of his crash sadly lost him his life. Just over a month later, in the early laps at the season finale at Fontana, Greg Moore lost it out of turn two, proceeding into a violent crash with the injuries he succumbed to. Both were hugely talented young drivers that we will now never know how good they might have gone on to be. Their safety team's work was not done yet. But that's it for today's video. The 80s and 90s had certainly seen a rapid development in safety, especially in protecting drivers from feet and ankle injuries and a better understanding of concussion. The rise of science, be that through medical science in treatment, scientific studies to better understand why and what type of injuries were happening, and through the development in technology in simulations and tests, had all contributed to the sport being a safer place for the drivers competing. Join us next week for the final part in the series as we look at the 2000s to the modern day and how the IndyCar safety team has become the gold standard for safety in motorsport in the world. So if you're new around here and haven't done so already, what can they do, Stephen? You can like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it. So for now, you indie fans, keep racing. Keep racing.